Hi, my name is Paul Crane. I'm Networks Research Director at BT. I uh, work in our Applied Research Department, um, which is uh, based out of Industrial Park, just uh, just outside London. Um, BT is very proud to be a research active organisation based here in the UK. Uh, I've been involved in uh, 5G since the early days of research um, through to assisting um, um, our mobile uh, division, EE, uh, roll out the, uh, the first 5G network um, in the UK. Um, and I think my, my experience over this time has led me to the conclusion that we probably need a different approach um, to technology development. Um, whereas we move forward from, from 5G to, um, to future mobile uh, technologies. Um, if you just look at the, uh, um, uh, the development of mobile over the years, and, and we'll all be familiar with this, uh, this transition from analog to digital, and then uh, voice and text through to mobile internet, through to uh, mobile broadband with 4G, and then the ambitions with 5G of extending that mobile broadband to support ultra reliable low latency comms and, um, and, and IoT. Um, but since the, um, uh, the conception of 5G and early research work, there have been some fairly fundamental changes um, in, in, in technology and the way we're going about implementing um, uh, networks, which I think leads us to um, that led me to the conclusion that we need to th seriously think about what we do uh, with uh, technology and how we implement technology going forward. Um, the one really big success, I think, over the last 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 few years, well, since since 2010, is the emergence of global mobile standards. So 4G, LTE, and 5G are global standards, rather than before that were uh, regional. And that's 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 been a major success for the industry, and something that we need to we need to really hold on to. Um, what we have been doing is a kind of this generational change approach. So three G to four G, four G to five G, um, which has resulted in operators needing to uh, do a you know major capital investment from one one technology to another, and also refarm spectrum. Uh, from one technology to another. Um, and I think one of the, you know, one of the issues we have with, with 5G is that technology is maybe running a bit of ahead of the uh, use cases that were anticipated. And therefore that makes that, that additional cost and the business case associated with that additional cost, um, uh, quite hard. Now 5G has been, uh, um, uh, launched in the UK, and so we're very proud to have been the first you know, company in the UK to have launched 5G. And our view is that it's going to be around with us for at least 10 years and probably 20 years, which means over the course of that time frame, you know, we're going to need to support um, uh, both legacy networks and 5G networks. So, you know, at least 2G, uh, 4G and 5G, possibly 3, 3G as well over the next next uh, coming years. And again, that results in a, um, uh, a, a major OPEX um, cost to, to uh, companies, uh, operators and having to do that. Um, and um, that's another drag on the economics of the company. And therefore, that's something else we need to consider when looking at future technologies um, for, for mobile uh, networks. Now, since the um, advent of uh, 4G and uh, particularly over the standardization period of 5G, there has also been another fundamental change um, um, going on. And that's the way we go about building networks. And it's probably the most fundamental uh, change in the way we build networks that I've seen since being engaged in the industry. Um, and that's based on virtualization, uh, based on disaggregation of network functions and based on uh, the advent of open architectures. And, you know, what this has, it will result in is us having a very flexible, 
a very agile infrastructure. Um, and it seems strange that we would then take a backward step of putting an agile infrastructure in and then having to go through a generational change from one technology to another. Uh, so I think that's a, you know, one aspect that we need to um, seriously think about. Now, I think um, you know, the te 5G technology um, has been really running ahead of the development of use cases beyond uh, mobile broadband. Now, you know, it's going to be another, what, two to four years before we get the features in 5G which supports ultra-reliable low latency comms and supports um, mass deployment of, you know, IoT machine, machine type um, applications. And so I think it's up to us to be working with industry to work out, you know, what those use cases, um, uh, practical use cases will be. But then look, projecting forward, you know, beyond those use cases towards, say, 20, 2030, when we may be thinking about, you know, a new um, generation of technology. I think it's really hard for us at network engineers to, um, to come up with those use cases. And I think, I think it's absolutely vital that um, we work with industry um, um, businesses to really understand what they think they're going to need in that in, in that time frame, and therefore I think it is it is it is way too early for us to be thinking about setting you know um, performance characteristics and parameters for something beyond five G, and it's way too early for us to be calling out use cases as being um, 6G use cases. I think we can say they're candidate parameters, and I think we can say that they are candidate use cases, but it's way too early, I think, than, um, uh, to be specific. We, however, can, I think, set a general direction. And you know, some of the things on this slide, I think, you know, are, are things that we would, you know, we would pass the red face test and say, Yes, managing world's resources is going to be important. Um, uh, opening up the digital world to everyone is going to be important. You know. Always being connected is always is is going to be important. So I think those general things. I think we can set the context in general direction. We can make some assertions about technologies as well, but I think we can't make a we can't be specific about technologies. At this stage, we cannot be saying that a technology is a 6G technology. It is a candidate technology that could be implemented in 6G. Um, things we can say though, you know, wireless connectivity will be increasingly essential um, to, the, to the digital economy. Uh, we can say that reliability, latency and coverage will be equally important as, as uh, peak rates and capacity, particularly coverage. And uh, you know, I've, one of the things I was always surprised about within 5G um, is how coverage really wasn't seen as one of the key parameters um, for for the service. And I think that is something that we need to really focus on as a technical community: um, economic coverage. Now, if the um, use cases that we've been talking about, you know, missing critical use cases, do come to pass on wireless networks, then you can guarantee that those networks will become another attack vector. And therefore, security, both, both cyber security and security against um, DDoS or protocol attacks, is actually going to be vitally important. So security and trust is a, is a, is a I think we can assert, something that needs, needs to, um, technical focus on. Sustainability, particularly energy usage, um, is, 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 will be key. Um, and, you know, from the fundamental silicon through to the end to end system, how to reduce energy out of, out of the network. Now, uh, there's no sign that the, you know, the current economic trajectory in telecoms is going to change. And, and by that, I mean, um, uh, usage and bandwidth usage, uh, going up. But with no associated revenue associated with that increased um, uh, increased data usage, uh, which results in us having to put more more and more 
uh, equipment in the network, spend more and more capex, but effectively for no increased revenue. And therefore, therefore, we need to ca- can continue to drive down on, on, on costs. We can also say, I think with certainty that they, that, that you know, new uh, equipment supply chain players will emerge uh, based on that virtualization and open architectures um, that, you know, that will drive innovation and in, in the, in the supply chain. And will be a benefit to large operators, large operators, large vendors, um, as well as, um, you know, potential, potential new players in the market. And finally, um, you know, one thing I think we can, can reasonably assert is that network usage patterns will change over the next 10 years. There will be many more machines connected than people. And if that's the case, the usage patterns will potentially change as well. And again, that's, um, that's a, a maybe a key requirement for the way networks are built um, in the future. So what do we need the technical community to focus on? Well, um, capacity, the traditional you know, telecoms engineer of farther, faster, cheaper. Um, I think that's, that, that will continue. One thing we need to think about seriously in that though is the element of cost. Uh, you, you know, mobile operators try and avoid building small cells as much as they can because of the costs associated with, with um, uh, small cells. And therefore, um, um, you will see you know, how on the early days of 5G, millimeter wave was you know, seen as a, you know, a great opportunity for increased capacity. But um, in most geographies, the use of millimetre wave um, is, a, is still a long way off. And that's primarily because of the costs associated with deployment. deployment. Now, I don't see that changing. So, um, you know, so for example, um, I wouldn't call terahertz a 6G technology. I would call it a candidate uh, technology until um, it's shown what use cases uh, the appropriate costs it can actually work in. Um, I've mentioned coverage, so just picking out uh, one or two others. Um, the one of the key things for for an operator is a smooth investment profile, and those generational changes that we've been talking about um, previously do not enable that smooth generation, uh, that smooth investment profile. And therefore, for future mobile technologies, I think we need to look at how we move away from these generational changes to much more of a release-based approach where an operator can put functions and features in the network that match, uh, much more match the market demand. The 5G journey has only really just started and it will be with us uh, for 20 years, 10, at least 10, to 20 years. Um, I think it's just way too early to be firmly identifying 6G use cases, 6G parameters and and, and 6G technologies. I think it's the right time for direction setting. It's the right time um, for looking at candidate technologies, candidate use cases. But we cannot say a particular technology is, is, um, is, is a 6G technology. I think we need to take a multidisciplinary approach here, bringing together the engineering, social sciences, material science, and industries to work together to define what is going to be required of a wireless infrastructure in that 20, 30 uh, timescales. Now, the way that we're implementing networks is to drive flexibility, is to drive innovation um, into the infrastructure. And so it would seem odd to constrain that with another non-backwardly compatible um, technology, um, another G. And therefore, I think we need to think about a different approach that takes into the constraints that the industry is going to be on in that 2030 timescales. And finally, uh, global standards are essential 
And we should keep mindful of that, that the big success of 4G and what will be the big success of 5G is based on global standards. And we all need to make sure that that as a regime continues uh, into the future. Thank <laughs> you.